Hold on a minute. What do you think you're doing? You are not going to that girl. What girl? The one you saw last weekend. I was in last weekend on business. That's where I'm going now. Last weekend you were in Santa Barbara at the Fiesta Hotel. All right, call Tom Roach in Chicago and ask him where I was. He'll tell you I was in Chicago. Three people saw you, Larry. Who? Not just one, but three. Who saw me? You were in room 19. You had dinner at the Howard House. You bought her a bikini at the carousel. Is this what you do with our 20 years? Just pick them up, put them in a suitcase and walk out the door? What is it, Larry? The lines in my face? A lot of things. What things? For one, I don't even feel alive around you anymore. I'm 45 years old. I've got a couple of good years left. I'm not going to waste them on you. Live a little. Living? You call that living? A cheap interlude in a, in a hotel? You bet I do. Look at you. 45 years old and still looking for thrills. Why don't you grow up? Don't you understand that everything you're looking for is right here in this home? Your children, 20 years, us. Us? What do you mean, us? What did you ever give me? You never gave me a thing. Can't you understand that? Understand. You've never really opened yourself up. You have never shared anything. You have spent your whole lifetime looking for a moment of pleasure for you. Always for you. Don't you shut up. You make me sick. I can't live with you. You can't live with anybody in Santa Barbara or any place else. No. Don't go, Let Larry. Go you on. can't do Let it. You me. can't. Larry, you're a fool. You can't. Larry, no. Oh, no. Let you. Larry, no. You idiot. You can't. Boy, Larry. Shut up. Larry. conflict in the 20th century. Insight. How do you do? My name is Father Kaiser. This is a story about hell. I'm not talking about a place of boiling pitch and horned devils stalking around with giant forks. Hell is a lot more real and frightening than that. Hell for Larry Bennett, as for each of us, is the consequence of a free choice to be selfish rather than loving, to take rather than to give, to live for ourselves rather than for God. This choice is implicit in every one of our free acts. We make them in time, but their effects are eternal. If you choose to live for yourself, you will spend all eternity alone with yourself. 
And that's the essence of hell. Most men don't have the opportunity to see the eternal consequences of their free acts while they're still in this world. Larry Bennett does. Doctor, can you come over right away? My husband's had a heart attack. talking and he got very excited. He, he, he was all set to leave and, and he just keeled over. I think he may be dying. Hurry, hurry. Mr. Bennett, I'm so pleased to see you. I trust you've come for the banquet. You didn't tell me about any banquet. No, I think you've gotten mixed up with someone else. No, you're Larry Bennett. And the young lady... The young lady's my wife. The young lady is Joanne Coyle. About uh, the banquet, you're both invited. Larry, maybe we shouldn't stay. Look, I don't know where you get your information, but all we want from you is room, all right? Yes, I know, but I hoped you'd prefer to come to the banquet. What banquet? My father's banquet. Listen, we came here to be alone. We don't want to go to a banquet. We just want privacy. We want it now. I'm sorry. My father will be very disappointed. I don't care about your father. Now? As you choose. I want a separate cottage. I think you should know that the price of that cottage is very high. The price doesn't matter. your father? Well, you can't see him from here. That's the terrible thing about this cottage. <laughs> that didn't look terrible to me. Oh, everybody's so beautiful. And they seem so happy. Well, Larry, maybe we should go. You should. You'd fit in. <laughs> We don't want it. I don't care anything about seeing your father. We just want to be alone. We want privacy. Can't you understand that? I understand very well. Fine. I make myself clear? Very, very clear. You won't be disturbed by me. Larry. Honey, you almost pushed him out. Well, if you didn't quit talking like about that party, I'd had to belt him. Well, I think you hurt his feelings when you didn't accept his invitation. He was sincere about that. I just can't stand people that don't know when they're not wanted. <laughs> Am I wanted? Any more questions? Same one, I like the way you answer. They're still at it. Must be a wonderful party. It looks pretty dull to me. Are you happy? I could stay here forever.
I mean it. I could stay right in this room forever. Yeah, you just like the brandy. Well, I like you. And the brandy. And the food. And you. <laughs> and the books. And you again. What else do you like? I like that painting. Just exactly where do I come in between the books and the brandy or the painting? You don't come in between anything. You are the room. You make everything in it rich and soft and beautiful. You make pretty words. That's what you are. See that sunburst? A shower of light. It's magnificent. The fire. Passion. Exaltation. You know, it seems to grow brighter as you look at it. It's because it's a symbol of life. And strength and youth. Which reminds me. Look here. A bike? Exercise bike. He's got electric motor. Now watch. Handlebars come way back here. Go all the way forward and back. It's just like having a gym right in your bedroom. It looks uh, painful to me. Well, this one's a great. And it exercises every muscle in your body. Well, you'll never get me on it. <laughs> you don't need it. I've gained five pounds already. I know it. I can feel it. Let me see. Uh, you look good to me. <laughs> At five pounds a week, I won't look good very long. Who says? You said that about your wife. You weren't very happy when she let herself go. Well, it was different with her. It wasn't a, wasn't a question of weight. I mean, she wasn't fat. It was more a matter of muscle tone. I mean, she let herself get spongy. Of course, that wasn't exactly it. There was a whole lot of things. Important things. I guess the main thing was communication. Or I should say, lack of communication. Meaning that we couldn't talk to each other. Of course, you know, me, I, I talk all the time. And she didn't have anything to say to me. Nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. She was just all locked up. And of course, after a while, I, I got so I was locked up, too. I feel like I, like I was going to explode. I couldn't get free. But she, she didn't care. I guess she didn't care because she wasn't interested. She didn't even try. I mean, she didn't try to be interested. Because she didn't care. Now, I'd come home at night, start to tell her all about what had happened to me during the day. Not that it was any fun for me, you understand. That's so... I'd look like I was trying to make conversation. 
Well, she wouldn't listen. Now, with you, it's different, though, because you are interested in what goes on inside me. I mean, you, you care about what's going on in here. Now, she never was. You know what she told me one time? She said that I didn't know how to give. I didn't know how to give. Well, I gave her a $60,000 house. I put $20,000 worth of furniture in it. I gave her a car that cost $6,500 that she used to go to the market and back. I forget what I paid for that fur coat. I think it was about $4,000. I never stopped giving to her. I worked myself right into a heart condition. And an ulcer. I gave her name, status, social position, the whole works. She never earned one dime of it. And she says, I don't know how to give. I gave her too much. And for what? Love me. I just told you I did. I mean, as much as when we first came here. Yeah, that's not a banquet down there. That's a marathon. What's the matter with those people? Nothing's the matter with them. They're just happy. They're having a good time. What's that supposed to mean? Well, all I do is smile. Smile, smile. Father really must be wonderful. Just looking at him makes them happy. Looking at what? I don't see anything. He's not even there. They make me sick. Painting's ugly. I don't, even, I don't want to look at it. Sick of it. I don't like this place anymore. Give me a drink. Go on, will you? Stains won't hurt this. Leave it alone! Now why do they bother to print this stuff? It's supposed to be the truth. So I'm dark. That's for me? No, Larry, it's for me. Oh, sure. You always think of yourself, don't you? You don't care about me. You know why? Because you're a taker. Look at you. I set you up in luxury. You don't have to lift a finger. You can have anything you want. 
Press a button, you can have any. I look at you. Face a mile long. You and your long face. I didn't plan on that. What did you plan on? I had a dream of life. Life. I can't live with you. Why not, Larry? Didn't I give you enough? Give! You don't give me anything. I don't even feel alive with you. You understand that? No, you don't understand me. Nobody understands me. Honey. Honey, look. Why don't we go to the banquet? Maybe... Maybe the father would understand. You couldn't get me out there. Why not? Because I don't want to go, that's why. Honey, please. Do it for me, please. Give in to me this time. Give in. I've been giving in all my life. That's all I do is give You've never in. given in. You wouldn't let yourself give in. You'd rather sit in this velvet cage and rot. Get out. Go on, get out of here! I don't need you. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. I know how to live, I'll live my way, not yours, mine. Mary Bennett's dream, we find all the crucial components of the future life. Heaven, hell, and the judgment. When the soul leaves the body at the moment of death, it encounters Christ. Through his eyes, the individual is enabled to see himself. All affectation, phoniness, and self-deception are swept away. The result is the most complete kind of self-knowledge imaginable. The individual passes judgment on himself. What criterion does he use? The basic one. Did he or did he not love? Did he give himself to God and other men? Or did he refuse? Once the individual has passed judgment on himself, he becomes aware of God's tremendous love. God invites him to the banquet. He invites all of us to the banquet. He wants us to spend all eternity in his company. A loving person will welcome this invitation. He will respond to God's love. The resulting union of the soul with God through love is the state we usually call heaven. The joy of heaven is beyond description. I hath not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. We do know that heaven will mean the face-to-face -face vision of God. No longer will we know him through a glass darkly. Our minds will be flooded with his radiant glory. We will know him as he knows us. We will be carried into the inner life of God and shall be enthralled by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit knowing and loving each other. Heaven also has a social side. It's the family feast of the faithful. Present will be all men of good will. Our happiness will be enriched not only by the presence of God, but also by the presence of our family and friends, by all those who have made God the center of their lives. Everyone is invited to this banquet, yet not everyone is willing to accept. Like Larry Bennett, they reject God's friendship. This is not what he wants. But God would not violate Larry's freedom. He would not force his love upon him. He would not drive him into heaven at bayonet point. And so if we, like Larry Bennett, insist on going it alone, he will reluctantly permit us to do so. The damned find the experience of God's love an unpleasant one, and so they recoil from his presence. This state of self-made separation from God this state of self-imposed isolation is usually called hell. It is difficult for us to imagine what it's like to be eternally deprived of God's presence. 
the human personality is so constructed that every particle of its nature cries out for God and seeks completion from Him. The souls in hell, through their own deliberate decision, have eternally deprived themselves of the only person who can give them completion and fulfillment. This is why the damned know the very epitome of frustration. Hell is hunger without food, thirst without drink, a question without an answer, need without satisfaction, desire without fulfillment. Anything that might reflect the lovableness of God, that might remind them of what they are missing, the beauty of a picture, the truth of a book, the goodness of a loving human being, all these things become offensive to them. Like Larry Bennett, they are incapable of enjoying them. The damned are even incapable of sympathizing with each other. There's no love in hell, only the most terrible type of loneliness. Hell is not a popular belief in the 20th century, but popular or not, hell exists. It's a fact, and your life must be organized accordingly. If your past has been self-centered, there's no reason why your present and your future can't be God-centered. That's something you can do. All it takes is an act of the will, an openness to God's grace, the courage to respond to his love. Larry, the doctor says you're going to be all right. You know, I've got another chance. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church.